My name is Ed Marable, Jr. On May 8th, the City of Orange will elect a new mayor. I want to be that person. I hope this video will be helpful and informative to you. If you are a residential or commercial property owner in Orange, you are concerned about the unbelievably high property taxes you are paying, with very little return on your investment in terms of services. If you are a renter, you should be concerned by escalating property taxes as well, because those taxes are being passed on to you in the form of higher rents. At the end of the day, no one is exempt from paying the high price of living or doing business in Orange. There are essentially three ways to stabilize or reduce property taxes. First, we can efficiently run our government in a manner which reduces waste and unnecessary spending. Second, we can broaden the base of those residential and commercial property owners who contribute to the city's revenue. This is generally referred to as increasing rateables. Lastly, we can access grants and other sources of aid which negate, usually temporarily, the need to fund our needs through tax dollars. Let's take a closer look at each of these approaches to stabilizing or reducing property taxes. First, let's look at running an efficient government. The reality is the vast majority of money the city spends each year cannot be reduced because it is linked to wages, benefits, or other contractually obligated fixed costs that simply cannot be delayed or ignored. We must pay negotiated salaries. We must pay to have the garbage picked up. We must make pension payments. We must pay the light bill. Unfortunately, the City of Orange has done a terrible job at controlling the costs it can control. The City is hemorrhaging money when it comes to the things we can control. Recently, the live broadcast of City Council meetings ceased due to alleged technical difficulties with the audio feed. Several months later, the City Council was asked to authorize over $16,000 to correct the problem. The problem was, no one could explain to me exactly what the problem was or what equipment was necessary to fix it. Instead, I was asked to authorize money to purchase new, high-definition cameras and other equipment that clearly had nothing to do with the audio problem. This scenario was minor compared to some of our other spending sprees. Last year, we paid hundreds of thousands of dollars unnecessarily as a penalty for not paying our pension obligations on time. Over the last few years, we've paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to pay the salaries of individuals who haven't worked a day. And in one instance, the employee was specifically told not to come to work. We spend your tax dollars on hotel rooms and pump gas for personal travel on your dime. The city's last available annual audit reads like a horror novel. The audit details mistakes, a failure to capture and track funds, waste, deviation from state law, and perhaps most importantly, deviation from generally accepted accounting principles. In other words, the things that we can control are not being controlled. In response, this administration contends that we do not yet have the sophisticated software necessary to rectify these problems. This explanation begs the question, what did towns do for hundreds of years before this software was created? The answer is, they followed generally accepted accounting principles and practices. Clearly, the City of Orange does not. As mayor, I will immediately put in place a corrective action plan to remedy each of the bad practices our annual audit indicates we have fallen into. The centerpiece of public trust in government is the need to know that your money is being accurately accounted for and properly spent. Secondly, taxes are increasing because not only is Orange not increasing its tax base, we are losing rateables and residents. Some of this has to do with an image problem. Orange is perceived as a place of high crime, low test scores for our students, and frankly speaking, drama. A city employee has threatened to kill the mayor. The mayor has fired an employee for statements made on Twitter. The mayor has accused a highly respected Orange police officer of assaulting him. The mayor is seen around town carrying a gun. 
The mayor has tripled his salary by taking a city job. The mayor is too disabled to work for the city of West Orange, but has three jobs in the city of Orange. Drama. The common denominator in all these things and more is Orange's mayor. Drama does not attract investment. Drama does not instill confidence in the government. Drama sells tickets, but it has made your property taxes increase. Frankly, I pledge to be as undramatic as I can be as your mayor. I do not crave attention, seek headlines, or desire to be on the 10 o'clock news unless it's promoting something positive about Orange. The other side of the rateables discussion has to do with the economy. Heretofore, Orange has hinged its plan to increase rateables on housing redevelopment. Unfortunately, the downturn in the economy has brought home sales in Orange to a halt and caused developers to steer clear of Orange, absent lengthy tax abatements to enhance the profitability of their projects. Orange's mantra has become, it's better to build something and get something than to build nothing and get nothing. I understand that. Nonetheless, we must be purposeful in our planning and in the choices we make. It often seems that as we grasp to get something in the form of rateables, we lose sight of the related effects. More children in our schools, a greater need for police and fire, more trash to be picked up, greater recreation needs, and more traffic on our streets, just to name a few. As mayor, I will be an advocate for smart, well-planned growth and taking a firm but fair stance with anyone wanting to redevelop Orange. Orange needs a more balanced mix of market rate and affordable housing. In addition, we can no longer ignore the infrastructure requirements that go along with increasing Orange's population. Finally, Orange has actually done a pretty good job of underwriting our needs through grants and other sources of aid at the state and federal levels. I will continue and, where possible, intensify those efforts. Again here, our annual audit points out that even where Orange has secured grant money to pay for something, we have not always followed up to realize those dollars and have, on occasion, funded projects out of our own budget as a result. Any candidate or elected official who tells you that they can dramatically reduce your taxes is not telling you the truth. Yet, there are things that we can do to stop the bleeding and make the unfortunate experience of paying taxes equitable and fair.